The Cube at IBM Impact 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsor IBM. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Paul Gillen. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is live in Las Vegas at IBM Impact. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm here with Bernie Schieffer, uh, IBM distinguished engineer on the software side, uh, based in Canada, almost 30 years with IBM. That's You've right. seen a lot of the uh, action. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, nice to be here. So uh, I really want to chat with you about, uh, obviously um, power systems is all the rage and um, talk from a hardware perspective, from a leadership perspective, not from a software perspective, but in general the role of software because you know, we, without going into the speeds and feeds of the hardware side, we're in a software defined era right now in, in a whole new way. I mean, obviously you can almost, we were saying earlier, oh, mainframes at the cloud, it's a cloud is the mainframe basically distributed in different parts. Um, but in general, that's where the market's going. You're seeing cloud being a great resource, on-premise isn't going anywhere. The data center still <laughs> needs to be somewhere. Right. It'll be an on-prem always. People are on-premise. So you're seeing the new distributed software model come back at systems again. Uh, so I want to get your take on that. So like, you know, from a big picture standpoint, power is enabling new capabilities. What is the software, if you had to kind of summarize the key software model and innovation around power, that enables it, besides the open source stack, but, but like, what, what is the software paradigm? Well, that's a, that's a big question. <laughs> so let me start by the fundamentals, which is that you've seen the new Power8 that was just announced um, is a, you know, a building block, a rack-based building block that you can then grow into a larger, you know, complete computing environment, uh, suitable for on-premise as well as for the cloud. Um, and now you have to, you know, make the maximum use of that capability in the software. And that comes through different dimensions. Some of them are sort of uh, low level process, you know, the number of cores and, and the frequency of the chip and so on. And for the most part, the software will exploit that transparently. Then you move into higher level value propositions, things like the simultaneous multi-threading, where if you have not designed your software right, you're going to get stuck. You're not going to be able to use all those hardware threads. Now beyond that, there's sort of new differentiated capability. And uh, just before we got started here, I was uh, you know, reminiscing that it was almost exactly four years ago today that I started the first internal meetings between the lead technologists on the power side, working with Software Group on what are the new ca differentiating capabilities of Power8 and how is the software going to exploit them. Four years ago, congratulations, you graduated college in that <laughs> time span, because that's like, you know, like going to college. So take us through that. So four years ago, you had a vision, hey, you know, we should put software on this in a, in a way. Take us through quickly, what happened in those four years? What are some of the highlights of the innovation? Well, you know, part of it gets uh, driven bottom up in terms of what will the process technology allow you? How much can you squeeze on a chip? And what's the right balance of cores and caches and memory bandwidth and I.O.? And all of those are important. And then it's, you know, these new features, you know, they all consume real estate on the chip. So how much value do they add? How much do they cost? Are, are they going to help you in the, uh, you know, in the transaction processing business? Which is still, you know, absolutely fun you know, fundamental foundational part of the business. But as we've heard at this conference, the, there's shifts, you know, things are moving in more into analytics, into, uh, you know, more, you know, insight over these vast quantities of big data. And those have different requirements. So I got to ask you the question. So we were talking to someone last night about Google and the iPhone and how when they bought Android, Larry Page bought Android Andy Room and there was Sidekick was like a, a different, different kind of uh, mobile device. And they were building it out and then Steve Jobs in 2007 showed the iPhone. Basically he said to Larry, oh shoot, we better go back and redevelop the software. Mainly, and that was the beginning of, of now, what now looks like in, in 2007 as the, the watershed moment of the whole mobile revolution, mm. smartphones and all the great stuff. Did you guys have one of those moments where in the power group where you're like, you're chugging along, you think, and, and was there a technology that, said, that hit you over the head like, okay, let's take a step, big step back to take a monster step forward. Was it flash, was it something else? Did you have a, it, was there a moment or a, a point that made you guys assess that or was it just 
smooth sailing. I mean, because Flash hit the scene pretty quickly. It did, um, and uh, you know, Flash <laughs> is, is, is good for, you know, I come from the database side, and you know, databases love Flash. You know, it can make up for a lot of other sins. Um, what I would say as a watershed moment was really that, you know, the, the, the next to the mainframe, the large power servers really are you know, untouchable by any other system out there. There's you know, no other uh, large SMP that comes close to what exists. But what we've seen is the evolution of the cluster of smaller computer building blocks that really make a difference with respect to being able to incrementally, horizontally scale your systems. And so you can see a kind of watershed moment where um, the first uh, and most uh, you know, visible power rate system launch is actually a two socket server that, you know, it's a small system, not a big gargantuan system, and it's optimized for Linux. And but you, there's no one trick pony here. You can actually use the power systems in, in, in concert with a lot of scale out little boxes, right? That's exactly, so the, the you know, S822 and S824 are two scale out boxes. They're only about yay high, um, and they pack an incredible amount of you know, compute capacity in them, and that can connect out through you know, PCIe Gen 3 out to you know, flash and external flash. Okay, systems. so there wasn't anything that hit you guys over the head in terms of, okay, we got to kind of rethink it, or um, something that just accelerated the process? Well, or was there? I think there were multiple things, like I said, you know, we, there used to be primarily a thought around large scale up systems. Yeah, yeah. And secondly, it was very focused on AIX. And you've seen a lot of you know, focus here on Linux, the new announcement about Canonical Ubuntu. Who would have thought you know, Ubuntu on a Unix mainframe? Um, <laughs> so you know, things have, have changed. Um, you know, and, and the industry has shifted. We've seen you know, the, the shift to cloud. You know, you've seen now the first steps towards that on the power system side with uh, you know, Watson coming to the cloud as well. Yeah, I, mean, I think the power system really highlights that this HPC high performance computing has really become much more mainstream, not outside of the little niche of like the compute world. It's actually more general. I don't want to say general purpose because it's not general purpose because you can mix and match, but like some of the things around analytics like storing big data, you don't have to make decisions on it. You can store a boatload of data, but when you want to jam on it, you're going to have to turn up some horsepower, right? Right. Is that kind of the, the mindset? Did it's, I oversimplify it? Uh, well, I, I certainly completely agree with you that you know, HPC, which we used to think of something that you would use to simulate nuclear explosions and <laughs> weather simulations and things like that, has now broadened into analytics, into um, you know, lots of new kinds of commercial applications where yeah. people are taking a flood of data and trying to make sense of it all. It's almost as if the, the power system is going to be the new standard in the data center because in a way, it's not just one box and you solve a problem and you leave it there and you manage it. It's actually part of the operating environment now in the data center. Do you see that? It is, and it's, uh, you know, it continues to have that um, reliability and scalability that is still valuable. So you know, it, having a system that stays up is valuable even if you have lots of them and where you have some kind of fault tolerance where you can have another system take over, there's still that moment where nothing's happening while you figure everything out. Okay, Bernie, I'm going to give you the last word of the segment. I really want you to tell the folks out there why, what is so important about the, the power systems from a software standpoint and why at this point in time in the industry is it something to take note of? Well, first of all, it is a seamless transition from what's come before. You know, you can move from earlier power systems, you know, no muss, no fuss, you don't have to do major new um, re-platforming of your applications, uh, of skills and so on. And secondly, you're you know, opening it up through a whole range of new capabilities and through the Op Open Power Consortium, you're, you now have connections into NVIDIA and all kinds of new accelerators that were previously you know, unthinkable in the world of a, you know, an, an open systems mainframe computer. Final question for you. Four years ago when you had that initial probably email you blasted out to someone else or called a meeting, you, your expectations were probably, you know, hey, let's explore this. Are you surprised? Share with us your personal feeling of where it is now and are you blown away? Did it meet your expectations, exceed your expectations? Is it completely radically different than you thought? Uh, give us some uh, personal insight there. Well, you know, it's always, uh, interesting how it's the little things that make the journey difficult. And you know, one of the things that's been, um, you know, I'd say a change for me in my you know, many years within Software Group is, you know, IBM is a large company and I've had other colleagues and competitors comment on the fact that you know, IBM, you know, IBM hardware and IBM software are almost like separate companies. And 
to me, the journey for Power8 has been a, a, a major new step in terms of you know, a unified collaboration of hardware and software coming together to deliver Power8 software optimized for the new Power8 hardware. Bernie, it's been a pleasure to have you. I wish we had more time. You're, you're what we call a tech athlete, someone who's been a um, great, uh, just, just like, a, like a pro athlete in, in tech. You've been <laughs> almost a 30 year veteran, distinguished engineer. Great to hear about your success, uh, and uh, we love this environment, and, and uh, thanks for enabling it. So, this is theCUBE, we're right back after this short break here in Live in Las Vegas for IBM Impact.